You're watching Telecom TV from ONS North America 2019. And joining me now is Rajesh Gadia, who is Vice President of the Data Center Group and CTO Network Platforms Group at Intel. Which is good to see you again on Telecom TV. Oh, it's been awesome being here. Thank you, Greg. Um, big announcements from Intel this week, some big data-centric uh, announcements. Can you expand on, on, on what you've announced and, and why it's important to the industry? Yeah, absolutely. So, like you said, this has been a really big week for Intel. We've had uh, a lot of good announcements uh, last couple of days. And essentially, what we have announced is our second-generation Xeon scalable platform, uh, codenamed Cascade Lake. And, um, it actually is exciting for us in networking because it's also actually a 5G ready platform. Um, and with so much talk going on at MWC Mobile World Congress and here at uh, ONS around 5G and edge computing, I think it is uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a phenomenal uh, product and platform. Now in addition to the second generation Xeon scalable uh, platform, we have also announced a few additional things. Uh, we have announced actually our opt-in memory technology, um, which is uh, going to be a game-changing uh, new memory technology. Uh, we also announced our Intel Ethernet 800 series um, Ethernet controllers, and uh, those are actually 100 gig with a lot of good capabilities, which I'll talk about. And then lastly, we actually uh, made an announcement about a next generation FPGA technology called Agilex. Uh, and so coming together of all of this, uh, when I look at it from the 5G perspective, uh, the need to actually do uh, provide more performance, uh, deliver more performance, uh, lead for, need for lower latency and uh, better quality of service from an end-to-end -end perspective, um, need for more cloud-native uh, implementations and supporting cloud-native software uh, with a lot of flexibility. Um, these are all actually uh, key things that we support on this uh, new second-generation Xeon scalable platform. So it's really exciting times. I'm very excited about uh, the launch this week. And this, this uh, second-generation platform, um, does, does this encompass um, network optimized SKUs? Yes, actually, that's a great question. So for the first time, we have, as a part of our product offering, um, we have announced what are called as NFV or simply stated N SKUs for the second generation uh, Intel Xeon scalable platforms. And uh, uh, what that is, is, is actually, you know, the learnings that we have actually had over the last few years with network virtualization, network transformation, and bringing the data center economics to network infrastructure, uh, we have actually looked to bring some optimizations specifically tailored for network infrastructure. And so uh, the n SKUs are exactly that. Um, there are actually optimizations uh, that we have done, um, which um, you know, by way of having more cores and um, a couple of additional frequency bins, it actually delivers up to 58% higher performance for many of the, uh, the workloads that we see in uh, network infrastructure. But not only that, what we actually did is something very clever. We actually um, went ahead and looked at um, how in you know, uh, network infrastructure, not all workloads run at the same priority. So some uh, run at a lower priority, you use less CPU horsepower. And so in those instances, we actually created a new technology called speed select technology based frequency. And what that does is it actually allows you to dial a certain number of cores at a lower frequency and take that voltage and power and apply it and turbo the rest of the cores up. So the net effect is actually it gives you additional performance improvement on top of the 58% I talked about. So in the case of uh, an application such as Virtual Switch, we see up to 76% performance improvement as compared to first generation as a result of these three things that I talked about with the NSQs. Now this, as we mentioned, is the Open Networking Summit. Um, what's the role of communities, open source communities and developers in furthering and advancing the rate of innovation we're seeing? That's a great question, Guy, because uh, software developers and the open source community uh, will play a very critical role with uh, 5G. And uh, I think 5G, it's not just about technology, but it's also actually about the business model innovation and the supply chain innovation. And what's happening with 5G is really uh, what we you know, hear as edge computing. And what edge is, is simply bringing the cloud uh, closer to where the data sources and where the applications are. And so we look at um, uh, the ability to run applications on-premise, um, and that's a version of Edge. And then uh, also in the telco Edge, aggregation sites and central offices called next generation central offices. And as we look at this hierarchy of uh, client, server, but also now you have Edge clouds and distributed applications, I think the role of developers you know, is, is, really the, is really a key uh, role. And uh, so 
we are actually you know doing um, a lot in that space uh, trying to actually provide the easy button for the developers to build edge applications and in fact you might have seen one of our announcements about openness um, which is uh, a software platform for building uh, and deploying edge services and uh, you know that is exactly in our attempt to sort of like you know provide that easy button really help grow the developer ecosystem so we can um, you know, uh, really foster the next wave of applications, innovative applications at the network edge. Great. Um, what, what, is, what would you say um, are the challenges that are still to be overcome? Yeah, and uh, that's again a, a very good question because um, I think we have come a long way in our network transformation journey, mm -hmm. but there are still uh, challenges and problems to be solved. Um, and this is something that I'm going to talk about in my keynote here at ONS tomorrow. Uh, but uh, to me, actually, there are three big problems that still need to be addressed. The first one is, um, I think uh, everyone's happy with the progress that we have made with NFV, but people are saying, hey, you know, I need more cloud-ready and cloud-native solutions, and I need the ability to, that flexibility to move workloads around in, in the cloud. Uh, and today, there are a lot of dependencies uh, on the platform, and, uh, you know, people made, like, uh, the, the, you know, our customers made the progression from appliances, fixed function appliances to network virtualization. But as they did that for various considerations like getting the best performance, they made choices that uh, create some dependencies on the platform. And so what we're trying to do is to provide that layer of device abstraction from a software perspective and yet do that with uh, performance in mind so we don't lose performance. And I think going down that path of achieving cloud scale uh, by allowing for cloud native applications, that is one big uh, area. The second area is network automation, um, which is, uh, I think, was going to be a fundamental tenet of what NFE was going to deliver. But I think we have uh, been a little bit behind the curve on that one. So we are actually doing, uh, we have work to do to drive um, uh, an AI-based um, uh, network automation um, solution, if you will, over time. So that there's like a lot of work that we need to do there. Uh, we are actually doing some work there that I'll share tomorrow. And then the last one is actually that easy button, like I said, to build edge applications. And so we have actually open sourced uh, openness, um, which uh, we'll actually um, provide to the developer community in uh, later in Q2 this year. And I think if you solve those three big problems, um, the cloud native direction, the network automation, and the easy button for building edge applications, uh, I think we would have realized the full potential of what 5G offers. And a final question for you, what is Intel's role in helping support industry innovation now and in the future? Yeah, so I actually uh, uh, like to think about a couple of things. So first, actually, as the platform providers, uh, I sort of like, uh, and the CTO for networking business, I look at three key vectors on which we are actually pushing the envelope. First, it's actually what I like to call um, the scale-up vector, uh, where we are trying to actually improve the performance per watt per dollar every generation by bringing new capabilities. New instructions for packet processing as an example, new kinds of accelerators for deep learning and inferencing solutions for AI. Um, so that's, to me, is a scale-up vector. Then we try to drive scale out and uh, the, the vision there is you might actually have resources anywhere in the infrastructure. How do you actually compose a service by drawing from that resource pool, right? And how do we achieve the true cloud scale, cloud native implementations? And then the last one is automation. Um, and uh, how do we actually drive uh, an AI based automation? So zero touch. And if something good happens, goes bad in the network, the network sort of like self recovers in, in an automated fashion. So scale up, scale out, and automation as three key vectors uh, is what uh, I think, you know, it's my vision for how network infrastructure will evolve particularly in light of what we need to, to make 5G real. Rajesh, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Awesome.